few years ago, I saw this Ben Affleck movie about a hitman called The Accountant. Affleck played an assassin who posed as a bookkeeper by day. And that's pretty much what I keep coming back to when I think about this publicly traded company called Solutions 30. The ostensible business is providing tech gadget installation and on-site technical support, which sounds super dull. But then take a closer look and you'll see multiple and persistent connections to money launderers and organized crime. So they're basically the cable guy, but with mafia ties. Or at least that's what the evidence suggests. But Solutions 30 has claimed they are the victims of some very unfortunate coincidences. If we were going to give them the benefit of the doubt, we'd have to believe they had no way of knowing that the head of their corporate services provider was named in the Panama Papers and actually worked for the Cosa Nostra, or that they bought a shell company from a guy in Cyprus who was wanted by the UK in connection with a multi-billion dollar bank fraud, or our most recent discovery that Solutions 30 Eastern Europe decided to upgrade its fleet of IT fix advance with a bunch of Porsches, BMWs, and Maseratis. Surely there's a good explanation for that. They could have gone to the wrong dealership. Maybe it was a cost saving move. I'm all for efficiency and I'm sure you could save some time going from zero to 100 in two seconds. I just doubt that offsets the five trips it'd take to haul a server. But let's look at it from their side. For them to be aware that they were getting into business with such dodgy people, it would have taken some work. For example, they might have been forced to use Google. Now you might be thinking that, well, they connect people to the internet. Google searches should be ridiculously easy for them. But you'd be forgetting the old drug dealer credo. Don't get high on your own supply. Let's get into the myriad coincidences linking Solutions 30 to guys who heartlessly kill judges, priests, and make ordinary people live in fear, like the human embodiment of COVID. First coincidence, Angelo Zito. No, Zito is not your favorite pasta. He's the managing partner of Fiduciaire Du Kim, a corporate services and accounting firm that worked with Solutions 30 from 2013 until 2016. If you didn't search the internet, you wouldn't know that this Italian accountant has close ties to the Cosa Nostra. From 1998 through 2000, Mr. Zito was involved in some judicial issues in Palermo. It appears that Mr. Zito was sentenced to prison for the crime of mafia association. Now, the offense was later wiped from his criminal record, which is fair. I got arrested for underage drinking. Basically the same thing. Okay, maybe two or three times. But the fact that this was wiped from his record gave Solutions 30 plausible deniability. I mean, how could they know, right? It wasn't until the publication of his conviction in an April 2016 article, the Italian magazine L'Espresso, that they could have known he had been the treasurer of a, quote, very rich mafia clan, right? That's certainly what they wanted their investors to think anyway, when they claimed that they had no prior knowledge of his crimes and were only made aware of it due to those media reports. Bad luck. Worse luck, though, was that Zito said essentially the opposite in an interview. La société Solution 30, quand elle a fait appel à, à vos services, elle était au courant de ce passé euh, Il est d'usage à Luxembourg, dans plein d'autres pays aussi, de, de faire ce qu'on appelle le due diligence, connaître son client. In other words, Zito claims that he told Solutions 30 about his past from the very beginning. I mean, these people really should have tried to get their stories straight. Or pull a Frank Pantangeli. I don't know nothing about that. But now they look like liars. Ironically, the company's investor website claims consistent and transparent communication is key. Such bad luck. So please, Solutions 30, clear this up for us. Is Mr. Zito lying about what you knew and when you knew it? Or are you? Okay, let's do a quick thought experiment to make up our minds whether Solutions 30 is unlucky or just full of shit. What would an honest company do if a publication revealed that one of their closest service providers had been the treasurer of the Brancaccio clan? Because trust me, 
Those guys were no band leaders in Godfather parlance. They whacked dozens of people, and I'm not exaggerating. So what should an honest company do upon realization of these facts? I mean, I'd imagine whatever the corporate version of changing your name, dyeing your hair, and disconnecting your phones is. It's a name! Oh, that and an investigation by a credible third party. But what did Solutions 30 do? Pretty much the opposite. Rather than fully cut ties with Zito, Solutions 30 hired Fabian Leger, who's one of Zito's former employees. Look, I know Luxembourg is a small country, but it's got to be bigger than the walls of Angelo Zito's office. Business service is Luxembourg's whole thing. I couldn't take a piss in Luxembourg without splashing a corporate headquarters. What do these facts make us think? Eh, that Solutions 30 CEO knew all along about Zito's criminal past and never really wanted to stop using his services. Or they just have some really bad fucking luck. But give Leger credit for being eager to please. Shortly after subbing in for Zito, Solutions 30 appointed him president of one of their largest subsidiaries, CPCP Telecom. This made all the sense in the world because he actually had no meaningful telecom experience. But, I mean, what world-class organization doesn't appoint people to senior leadership roles who have no operational experience? It would be one thing if Solutions 30 only had ties to convicted accountants, but their business practices also point to something more, potential money laundering through shell companies. Brand 30 is now one of Solutions 30's largest subsidiaries as it constituted over 18% of the company's net income in 2019. But before that, it was an itty bitty shell company that experienced some unfortunate coincidences of its own. Brand 30 was formed in 2013 with the help of Angelo Zito and was beneficially, or coincidentally, first owned by the best friend an alleged money launderer could have, Paul Critiotis. But that's not the most outlandish part. In October 2011, Critiotis was sentenced to 21 months in prison in a UK-based trial, which means that based on public sources, in 2013 when Brand 30 was formed, Paul Critiotis was literally evading a UK prison sentence by hiding in Cyprus, where he had just been released from a different prison sentence. So why was Solutions 30 again unable to use Google? I cannot believe there's a legitimate reason for Brand 30 to be owned by a convicted criminal just before Solutions 30 bought it. So which is it? Is Solutions 30 management just stupid or are they in on it? Listen, if you didn't know you'd be a scam, you're too fucking dumb to keep this job. If you did know you were in on it, either way, you're out. Get out. Go on, let's go. Despite what Solutions 30 has claimed, their connections to money launderers are not tangential or accidental. I've looked at hundreds of public companies and I've never seen this many coincidences involving money laundering and convicts. But we are not even close to done. Let's shift gears for a second and introduce you to Federico Salmaraghi. He's been one of Solutions 30's main business partners in Italy and Eastern Europe. Until the last nine months, that is. When Solutions 30 began stuffing its Salmaragi connections into the corporate memory hole. Coincidentally, this occurred around the same time that Salmaragi's Remote 30 Eastern Europe had its bank accounts closed on suspicion of money laundering. I mean, are you kidding me? Salmaragi's transactions so obviously oozed blood-sucking criminality that the Bank of fucking Transylvania kicked him out? But subtlety is clearly not Salmaragi's strong suit. Because when we looked into what his companies were doing in Romania, we discovered leases for more luxury cars than Mohammed bin Salman stuffs limbs in in one week. Anybody who's seen Goodfellas knows you shouldn't call attention to yourself through flashy cars. Are you stupid or what? Did you hear what I said? Don't buy anything, don't get anything, nothing big. Did you hear what I said? What's the matter with you? In all seriousness, we doubt Salmaragi is actually driving these cars. This has all the markings of what's called a VAT carousel fraud. Or it could just be how grown-ups play Hot Wheels. Of course, Solutions 30 and their multiple business relationships with Salmaragi were also just a coincidence. 
And the fact that Solutions 30's own Ruggiero Fortis was director of multiple businesses owned by Sal Moraghi is also a coincidence. Such bad luck. Now it's time to discuss the uncorruptible, unbiased force that keeps markets as honest as they are, the auditors. When Solutions 30 was under fire, they made a big move and cleared the absolute lowest of bars. They brought in an accountant to conduct an internal review, but we're once again saying, wow, what are the odds? The accountant Solutions 30 hired is Didier Kling Expertise et Conseil. But Didier Kling, after whom his firm is named, sold his last also eponymous firm to Grant Thornton, which happens to be the auditor that signed off on years of Solutions 30's prior audits. While these conflicts aren't illegal, just ask yourself how independent do you think Didier Kling Expertise et Conseil would be going against Grant Thornton, the owner of DDA Kling & Associates. Here's what we imagine it would look like. You might be thinking that DDA Kling sounds like a company that makes string bikinis, to which I would say they have nine employees on LinkedIn. Now, if that sounds like a non-response to you, just remember that if you had to resort to hiring a firm with this many conflicts and this few people to investigate you, there's clearly no real way to cover your ass. Wasn't there somebody else available to do this investigation? Maybe somebody who doesn't have an obvious conflict of interest, like um, the firm whose name rhymes with toilet and douche? Well, sort of. After we called Solutions 30 out for not hiring a big four, they engaged Deloitte and Touche. But here's the catch. Deloitte's mandate is to review, quote, governance and reputation, not financials. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would you get a big four audit firm to review your governance and not your financials? That's like popping a Viagra and then telling everybody you got the vaccine. To be able to pull off all these complicated scams, frauds, and grifts, you need a network of people who know how to do them. Let's take a look at all of them, shall we? You have Solutions 30's ties to Angelo Zito and his connections, Federico Samaragi and his connections, it's almost like this is organized. And that's the point we're trying to make. Solutions 30 has had persistent connections to organized crime and money laundering. So either they enjoyed reaping the benefits of working with these crooks, or they were too lazy or stupid to keep their books clean. But when you have criminal after criminal showing up in your paperwork, it looks a lot less like coincidence and more like a choice. This is the business we've chosen. <laughs> well said, Hyman Roth. Solutions 30 chose to do business with these people. And despite what the Godfather might suggest, making a deal with an alleged mafia associate is an offer you can refuse. But they didn't. Again and again. Well, we've made some light of these facts here. The truth is that these are very serious potential problems that Solutions 30 has. We're not accusing these guys of jaywalking. We're not even accusing them of just cheating investors. We're accusing Solutions 30 of being intimately involved with serious crime. This company, more so than any company in Europe, needs to be investigated and needs to be investigated soon because the longer this takes, the more time they'll have to bury the bodies and cover this up. This could be as big, if not a bigger scandal than Wirecard, and somebody needs to act soon. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Motherfucker!